looking good. There we go. Yep. All right. All right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the commission's weekly online event. Um, we're a webinar. We're a webcast. Uh, we're an online show. The terminology is up for debate to some people. <laughs> um, but whatever you want to call us, we are here live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Uh, if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. We do record our shows every week, and you can always go back to our website, which I will show you at the very end of today's show, and see all of the recordings from all of our previous shows. Um, both our live show and our recordings are both free, all free and open for, to anyone to watch. So um, any of the old things you want to watch, you can go back there and see them all. Um, if you have any friends or colleagues you think might be interested in anything we're doing on here, let them know about us, share, have them come, on, come and um, watch the show with us. Um, or check out all of our recordings. Um, general, we usually do include with them afterwards if there are any slides or handouts or presentations involved. Um, we'll include that in the recording afterwards as well. And any links and websites that anybody mentions, we try and collect them all into our delicious account um, where we collect bookmarks together. Um, so that'll be available to you as well. So try to get everything you can afterwards. Um, we do a mixture of things here on Encompass Live. We do interviews, book reviews, mini training sessions, uh, demos, uh, basically anything library related. We have it on the show. We're not very picky <laughs> in that case. Anything um, related to libraries, libraries are doing, things that might be of interest or use to libraries, um, we want to share with you. Uh, we do have uh, Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes do presentations, but we also bring in guest speakers as well. And this morning with us on the show, we have one of our guest speakers, um, and you can, hopefully you can see her video there. Uh, Jessman West is with us this morning um, from Vermont. Hi, Jess. How are you? So pretty good. Good morning. Good. It's still, yes, it is still morning for you, only an hour off on the East Coast from us. <laughs> um, and she's going to talk to us about um, this great program that Vermont's been doing in, um, for two years now, this is starting up their second year, um, Passport to Vermont Library is a great little uh, program um, to um, get people visiting libraries in the state. So I'm just going to hand over to you, um, Jessamine, to tell us all about it. Sounds great. Thanks for showing up, everyone. I'm really happy to get to talk about this program because I'm actually really excited about it. Basically, um, it's a sort of a summer program we do. It's not our summer reading program. The loose idea is we, as the librarians of Vermont, love the libraries of Vermont, and we would like to kind of share our love of discovery and finding out all the different kinds of libraries that Vermont has. As states go, Vermont's got more libraries per capita than any other state in the country, which is kind of easy because we also have the second smallest population of any state in the country. But um, there's a lot of teeny libraries. We don't have any state consortiums. We have a state library system, but we don't have any regional consortium. So each library is very I know it sounds weird to say very unique, but each library is different, and they're all uh, very um, sort of specific to their community in ways that are sort of cool and interesting. And so we started this program uh, the sort of beginning of last year, launched it last summer, and we're now in our second year. So I'm really going to step through what the parts are of having a program like this that we run statewide. I'm aware that for a lot of people, the idea of a statewide program makes absolutely no sense because most states are big and it's just completely not workable. But one of the great things about this kind of program is that it scales. You can do it in your county, you can do it in your region, you can do it in your, who even knows? There's all sorts of different ways to, to do the program and people seem to like it and it's pretty flexible to do whatever you want. So the web address there has the page that's got the links. Krista will also send you the web address around, but that's there right now. You can see these slides in addition to links to all the things that I'm going to talk about that might not have obvious web addresses. So before I really start talking about our project, I wanted to talk about some projects that were inspirational to us. Uh, notably, Vermont has a um, it's got a group called the 251 Club of Vermont. It's one of Vermont's largest nonprofit groups, and it's essentially a group of people who like to visit the towns of Vermont. There's 251 towns in Vermont, and it's literally just a membership club. You pay five bucks or something, and you try to visit all the states and 
t or towns and cities. Uh, cities is kind of a misnomer. We only have eight cities in the state, but you go visit them, and if you visit them all, you nothing. You're a plus member, and that's about it. But it's a way to sort of again, we love the state. It's fun to go visit. The club kind of, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to take a picture in every town, but you can. You don't have to go to every town hall, but you can. You don't have to. So it's a very nice kind of do what you want with the idea. The club has a little bit of structure. They've got a meeting once a year, and uh, that's it. And then Connecticut did a passport program um, a couple years earlier, I'm not sure if I actually have a link to this because I'm not sure if the program's up online anymore, but it was a much more similar, hey, go visit libraries and get stamps. And they had a really nice looking, um, looking passport and it was maybe in a specific county. I don't actually sort of remember, but that's what got us thinking, oh, hey, we can maybe do this in the state. And when I say us, it was basically me and a couple other people, the Vermont Library Association, we formed an informal committee and probably four or five of us did the bulk of the work. So I'll talk about kind of how we got started. This breaks down into about five different sections. And if you have questions, feel free to do whatever webinar hand raising thing. I'm happy to stop and explain more about a thing or back up and talk about a thing. So getting started, we needed to figure out sort of how to put a thing together. I was really hoping I could just find some design like, hey, print out this passport. It's a PDF. It's available on the internet. Put your own name on it. But that turned out really not to be true. There were a couple passport designs for like kid things, pretty low low key kind of cartoony. Wasn't exactly what we wanted to do. Uh, so I took a template that was not quite a passport template and really kind of worked it around uh, using uh, Pages, which is software for the Mac, and turned it into the sort of PDF I have now. So anybody who wants that template now, it is available uh, from us. I can even help you uh, make one that says what you want. But right now, it was a lot of work the first year. And then the second year, I was all like, ah, oh, this is going to be a lot of work again. Blah. But it turns out changing the picture and changing two or three things to do the next year's one took almost no time at all. So a lot of front end work the first time and then after that really straightforward. So what we did at the Vermont Library Association, I'll show you some pictures, is we um, we printed out maybe a thousand of these and handed out uh, starter um, sets of passports to the libraries, but we also made the PDF available on our website so that libraries that were big and were popular and really needed more of them could just print them out themselves. No problem, very easy. Each of them takes up, uh, you know, one sheet of paper has kind of a half sheet thing. So a passport would equal a half sheet of cardstock and then a sheet of plain paper on the inside that would be cut in half. Um, I found a photo from Wikimedia Commons, and there's this great website that I love called The Noun Project, which essentially just gives you lots and lots and lots of icons. Need an icon of a book? Need an icon of a building? Need an icon of an arrow? Need an icon of whatever? You can get it. They're all free to use as long as you give credit. So we have a website uh, for this program where we give credit to The Noun Project and everyone else. So if you decided to be a participating library, so Vermont has 183 libraries, and we wanted people to sign up. And if you signed up, a participating library would get a little packet of passports to get started. And this was probably the most important thing of the program. We would give them templates for everything they would need. Here is a poster that announces the program. Here is a press release that you can send to your local paper with some information on it. Here's flyers that you can hang up in your library. Everything was designed. It was designed to look kind of the same as the passports and we could just give them the libraries and like, you know, fill in your library name here so they didn't have to do any designing. Mostly all they had to do was sort of print stuff. We took a bunch of photos of the process and we took some really nice photos of the passports and just put them in a Flickr set so that libraries who wanted color photos to put on websites or blogs or Instagram or Twitter or whatever could have access to those. Uh, we'd give tech support for people who had needed help 
putting a thing on a flyer or understanding another thing. We had web addresses that uh, libraries could give their patrons on the passport. There's a, hey, share your pictures at this web address. And for librarians, there was a page that gave them a lot more details. That's where all the printable stuff was. It would give them updates and information. And our whole Vermont Library Association website runs on WordPress. So it was a pretty simple WordPress hack to make two pages that were short web addresses that people could remember. Well, actually, the passport one is short. The other one, eh, not quite as short. But easy to get to, their own look and feel, not super complex. And then the other big thing we did to make it kind of a statewide thing is uh, people could get prizes. We assembled little prize baskets. And the way the program worked was starts June 1st, ends September 1st. There's two weeks of determining who visited the most libraries from adult, young adult, and kid age groups, and then one wild card winner. And they'd get prize baskets that would have things in them. Books, Ben & Jerry gift cards, little, little stuff that people from Vermont would appreciate. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. So you could visit any library and get a stamp. But participating libraries, you could go and get a passport. If you were part of a participating library, you could win. We may relax that a little bit this year. It doesn't actually really matter that much who's participating and who's not participating. We don't do a ton of record keeping. But it does give us a list of people that we email every kind of couple weeks just to keep them apprised of what's going on. And then we have a map of all the libraries that participate so people can sort of plan their trip. Uh, so this is what the passport cover looks like. It's just a pretty straightforward template. All of those icons, the little circle, the books, the outline of the state, those are all noun project uh, icons that we used. This is what the back looks like. That's the Vermont Library Association logo, and it's a very simple web address where people can learn more about the program. Uh, the inside, you can put your name on it. You can put the name of your home library. And then I kind of got ahead of myself and got a little complicated with this and decided to make a list of all the towns in Vermont, because you can copy that list from Wikipedia, right? Pretty straightforward. And then put the ones in bold who are participating. Terrible idea. Never going to do that again. Because in Vermont, like probably a lot of other states, we have some towns that have multiple libraries in them that maybe are slightly different. Or we have this town and um, village thing. So, like, you might have a town, Essex, they might have a village, Essex Junction. Essex and Essex Junction each have their own library, but there's only the town, Essex. And at any rate, there were some towns who were like, you don't have us in bold, or we're in bold, or whatever. So this was kind of a cool design feature, never doing it again. But it did look really awesome. And then this is the inside, um, which just had one of the libraries, I believe it's in Huntington, Vermont and a really kind of a pretty backdrop and then little squares for putting stamps in and we had originally thought oh we'll just put the name of all the libraries no crazy not a good idea 183 libraries super complicated and we did get some feedback which is like well it would have been really nice to know when the libraries were open because we do have a lot of libraries that maybe are open 14 or 16 or 18 or 20 hours a week and so if you're really planning to go visit it can be actually a little complicated making this all work and figuring it out. So we compromised and linked to the website from the state that has a giant Excel spreadsheet that uh, has all the hours. I do really wish there was a user-friendly way to get information about all the hours in a handy, you know, now I've got schemes, right, that what I want to do is make an app so that people on their phones block. Don't really know. But on the inside, and we just have, um, kind of two pages, so it's not it's not super big. The people who really did visit the most libraries really filled these all up. But a lot of times you get kind of multiple stamps for every square. And it's fine. And then in the inside, we include the Vermont Library Association's logo again. And then we have our Facebook web address. And the Facebook web address was where users who were visiting libraries could share photos. And we weren't really sure if this was going to take off or be a thing, but we figured, ah, oh, we'll try it. Because there's a lot of people in Vermont that use Facebook, but the Facebook slash library overlap in Vermont is actually not that big. Like, Vermont libraries have Facebook pages, but they're not sort of hotbeds of activity. So we weren't really sure how this would go. 
but it actually turned out to be super useful, not only because people who visited libraries like to share their photos, but because the libraries with Facebook pages then could promote, I mean, we could cross-promote with the different libraries. So I think it's always kind of nice when professional organizations that use Facebook can sort of interact with each other. And that actually turned out to be one of the things that happened with our Facebook page. Libraries could promote content that we put on Facebook, share it out or whatever, and vice versa, we could share posts that libraries had made. So it wound up being um, neater than I even thought it would be, which was cool. Um, and one of the things about handing out a press release is lots of places that really want content and interesting stories are actually super happy to share your information. So we wound up with posts on VPR and a lot of the not that small newspapers in the state of Vermont, which was great. Uh, the good news was we got good promotions and they like to share our photos and that kind of thing. So having the photos available really helped. Uh, the bad news was they, in some cases, printed our um, uh, press releases verbatim, which I wasn't expecting. So, you know, there was a little typo. Uh, it turned a comma in the wrong place in one of my press releases. And then I just got to see it perpetuate uh, among all these places that reprinted it. So we were really happy to get that um, PR and coverage, but it did really sort of drive home how important it was to really make sure the press release was ready for prime time. So from an engagement perspective, what we did while the program was actually running, uh, we had a bunch of social media sort of angles. Uh, the Facebook group was its own Facebook group. So it wasn't just a thing the Vermont Library Association did on their Facebook group. It was its own thing. Uh, we had to kind of decide about that because VLA really does its own thing. And we were a little bit afraid if people were just posting like passport, 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 passport stuff, they actually weren't going to pay attention to the other great things VLA does, like summer reading and like some of the awards we do. So we had our own branded Facebook group. Um, we did promote through all of VLA's channels. And um, for us, a lot of that is actually mailing list stuff. We have a couple statewide mailing lists. And, uh, you know, we have a Twitter, but it's not, it doesn't have a big impact because a lot of our librarians are not really on Twitter. Uh, we did have a hashtag and we did have some people using Instagram for this, but not so many. The big thing that we did to keep the librarians informed, which was also kind of a little bit of a, um, like a hub and spoke thing. Someone would tell us like, oh, I have a really good idea. Like we had one librarian who said, you know, the idea of traveling all over the state to go to libraries didn't really appeal to people in her rural uh, community that's way up in the Northeast Kingdom. So she was deciding to do a little local um, contest that was just, hey, visit all the libraries in the county. And I thought that was a really good idea. And so she told me, and then I could put it as one of the things in the sort of twice monthly mailing list that I send out to other people. So that's a way for us to connect to people, let them know how the program is going, kind of update them if anything new is happening, remind them of whatever the dates are that are coming up, et cetera. And for that, we use MailChimp, which I find amazing. Just super simple mailing list management, easy to make sort of graphically attractive emails that people can look at that have links to a whole bunch of other stuff, et cetera, et cetera cannot speak highly enough of using MailChimp for this kind of stuff. And um, out of 183 libraries, I think last year we had 99 libraries participating. And this year we've got more like 115. So for a mailing list, it's not so many people you couldn't stick it in the BCC list of your email, but it allows you to use a lot of pictures and graphics and everything else. And then on the admin side, administering this program, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later, we used all the Google stuff, right? We use Google spreadsheets to keep in track, track of people. We use Google Docs to share information among the committee members. We used Google Maps to get the locations of all of our libraries. And I'll, I think I have a picture of that coming up. And we use Google Forms to do some uh, feedback and evaluation of the program, both during the program and after the program, which was super helpful. Um, so this is a look at what our Passport to Vermont Libraries Facebook page looked like. We don't have a whole bunch of metrics that we were really trying to hit with this, but it was nice being able to see like how many people our posts are reaching, 
how, you know, giving people a message box where they can talk to the program, which we otherwise kind of didn't have. You know, we had, hey, here's everyone on the committee in our email list, but there wasn't a way to actually talk kind of to the program directly, and our Facebook page did allow that. This is a screenshot from the end of last season. And then this is what our website looks like. It's just the VLA website, and we had this little checklist of, you know, what's happening, this is how we need to schedule it, and I'll talk about schedules a little bit coming up, but this is what librarians could read to figure out what they needed to know about the program, and it was a different page than our patron-facing page to help them sort of get jazzed about the program. And I think that's important because administrating the program and being a participant in the program really do have sort of two different sets of requirements. If you scroll down on this page, there's a link from uh, on my page. You can see we have an FAQ and some other stuff to help answer people's questions. And at the end of every MailChimp email that we send out, we included this footer which just restated, here's the Facebook, here's the hashtag, here's our Instagram, here's the, just so people would kind of get the idea, hey, you know, there are interactive ways to sort of do social media with this. I felt like one of the side benefits of this program is that librarians in Vermont who maybe didn't use social media very much, and there's a lot of them, and nothing wrong with that, but I do feel like more and more of our patrons are starting to use social media, so it was a concern if librarians were like, I don't really know why I would do that. Like, if you're a librarian at a personal level, Twitter may not solve a problem for you, but it's important, I think, to understand the Twitter environment, at least, so that you can assess whether or not you need to use it. So this would just keep, you know, hey, we're just, there is Instagram, there is Twitter, VLA is on there, you can interact with us. And so at a point at which a librarian decides, hey, this solves a problem for me, that information is just there in the footer, very low risk, very low, you know, you have to do this, kind of, because Vermont is a very tradition-based state, and so telling people the new thing is what they should be doing doesn't go over that well, and probably not true, to be honest, but letting people know these options are available to figure out at which point it solves a problem for them, I think that's helpful. So we tried a bunch of different maps. Z maps, which you can kind of see, um, I guess it's on your left. Uh, Z, Z maps basically has a dot where all the um, participating libraries are. The ArcGIS map is a map that was made by the state. Um, the state has some challenges, I think, dealing with um, sort of web-based stuff. They're not web natives, and so they don't always, um, the choices they make don't always seem to necessarily make sense. So as much as the ArcGIS thing was a very accurate map, which had all the you know, latitudes and longitudes of all the libraries, it actually wound up not being super useful for what our patrons needed, which was literally just looking at a picture with a road and figuring out um, figuring out where, how they could get from one library to the other. And we actually switched from Z Maps, which is the thing that layers on top of Google Maps, to just using a Google Map tool this year, and it worked out really well. But the mapping tools are great, because people really like to see where things are, people really like to understand how to get from point A to point B, and looking at a thing from the top down with this kind of blurry blue and purple thing didn't really solve that problem for the people who were using it. And I talked earlier about prizes. We have a woman in Vermont who wrote a book in the 90s called Where the Books Are, which literally was her and her husband going to every library in the state and writing a little blurb about the library. It's adorable. And the woman who wrote it, Pat Belding, is still around and alive and was very happy when we contacted her to donate some copies of the books. We got a couple other things donated. Uh, you see sort of the, the books for kids down in the corner, lots of stickers, um, and then we used some VLA money to actually purchase some gift cards and some Vermont Country Store gift cards. You can use them to buy online or not. This year we're trying to go for all donated prizes, and then we bundle them up in a Vermont Library Association tote bag, and I'll show you sort of what that looks like when, when delivered. Uh, so this is Pat Belding. 
She's, I believe, in her 90s. And we actually, one of the other things we did was we went to her house in Barry, Vermont, and interviewed her about the process and shared out that interview on our mailing list. I mean, ultimately, it's linked to on our website. But it was kind of a, a value-add bonus for participating libraries. So you could, we spoke to her. I don't know if you can sort of read this on tiny screen, but basically, you know, she got it published. The local library gave her a book signing. She sent out flyers to every library. Lots of libraries bought it. She got her print run of a thousand completely sold out, and she's got about five copies left now. So we're really happy that we got a couple of those to give to people to share our love of libraries. And maybe at some point we'll look at, you know, a Vermont Humanities grant to sort of do the the, the re-upping of that book, which we all love. Like every librarian in Vermont is like, oh, Pat Belding, where the books are, so cool. So as far as timing goes, uh, what a lot of people ask is like, okay, what was the timeline for this? Like when did you have to get started? When did you have to really hit it? When did you have to? And we're kind of lucky in Vermont, at least in terms of this, in that our conference is in the mid-end of May. So the whole plan hinged around getting the passports assembled so that we could hand out the starter packs at the conference so that we could minimize postage, which, you know, if you're trying to run a program on almost zero dollars, stamps to mail stuff to 100 libraries actually winds up costing something that looks like real money. And so what we wound up doing, like I said earlier, we did a lot of the assembly ourselves. And we really had one big work weekend where all five of us got together at the Kimball Library, which is my library in Randolph, Vermont. Um, we made the photocopies at the vocational school that I work at who donated the photocopying. We purchased the paper. And then we spent an entire weekend folding, stapling, rubber banding, folding, stapling, rubber banding, corner cutting, folding, stapling. And, you know, it was a lot of work, but it was like, five hours, one day, and we got most of this done in sort of early May. So basically we start planning in March, we start figuring out what the design is going to be like, what the assembly is going to be like, we start promoting it to librarians in mid-April, we try to get as many people as possible um, signed up before the conference, and last year for whatever reason we really wanted like, if you're signed up before the conference you're in, otherwise, and then when we evaluated we were like, well there's no real reason it doesn't matter. People should be able to sign up at the conference. You know, we had a table at the conference just to hand these packets out, and we did get a lot of people who asked us, oh, hey, tell me about the project. Oh, I'm really sort of interested in that. Oh, how does that work? So this year, we actually signed people up at the conference as well. And so as far as uh, administering the program on our end, what we would do is we would have everybody type things into a Google Sheet. This is sort of what it looks like on the back end with our winners. Our actual winner last year, the adult winner, visited 101 libraries, which if you're kind of doing the math at home is like more than half of the libraries in the state, which is crazy. Like that's more libraries that I've been to and we were just amazed. But she just made it her summer project and she just kind of got in the car and made a plan and visited a couple libraries every weekend or after work and had a great time. Our, you know, our YA winners visited like, you know, 20 or 30 kid winners visited sort of less. But basically each library would submit to us what their local winners were. And some libraries would do regional, like local award ceremonies and some would not. Uh, the woman who actually, I believe, won I think, if I'm right about this, she was the winner at her local library as well as the statewide winner. So, you know, there was a lot of prizes kind of coming her way. But a lot of libraries would give out stickers or bookmarks or little fun stuff to people who were on the Passport Project. But it was, it was just sort of either whatever you wanted to do, which was good for smaller libraries who felt a little like, well, what do I need to do? Do I need to buy prizes? Do I need to? And we're like, no, you can do it. You can kind of do it however, however you want to, really. And so this is like an, a picture of one of the passports, and you can kind of see that some libraries had stickers, some libraries had special stamps, some libraries just used their library stamp, some libraries would sign them. 
My favorite thing about this was that libraries could get as into it as they wanted to, and there was no pressure to be or do the project in a special way. Uh, I think some libraries really benefit from like uh, very serious rule structure and very serious like this is how it works. But we wanted to try and be as inclusive as possible, and so removing as many barriers as possible. You know, don't have a rubber stamp? Fine. Just use your date stamp and sign it, or don't sign it, or whatever. Doesn't matter. <laughs> so this year we heard about libraries that were getting special rubber stamps for the thing, which we're kind of excited about, and a whole bunch of other kind of stuff. And we encourage people to share pictures of the insides of their passports, and they all look different, which was sort of neat. And then we'd share them out on the MailChimp mailing list, which is what this is a screenshot of. So here's just a couple pictures from uh, the different the different people that put this on Facebook. So Linda Childs is from one of the libraries, so she shared this, and then we shared this out on our page. This was actually our teen winner. So Bennington Library celebrated her, and then we could share it on our page, uh, these two adorable kids visited 28 libraries and which libraries they liked and what they found. And so this is, you know, the Lanford Memorial Library basically doing kind of a neat outreach job talking about, hey, here's some something these kids enjoyed at the library. So you get to tell positive stories. It's almost an excuse to tell positive stories about going to visit the library. And I should mention um, the Haskell Library in Derby Line, which is mentioned in this, actually is on the border of Vermont and Canada and has, like, literally on top of it, <clears throat> and has a line that goes through the middle of the library. And if you go in the front door of the library, you can walk across the border into Canada and go out the other side of the library and be in Canada. I mean, obviously, you're not supposed to just sneak in that way, but you totally can. And it's a really interesting <laughs> library, but it's way the heck up in Derby Line, and they don't get a lot of just sort of random people visiting, And but it is one of Vermont's weird little treasures that you wouldn't know about, and this gives people an excuse to kind of go visit. They have two phone numbers. They have a Canadian phone number and a Vermont phone number. I swear I put together this program mm -hmm. just so I could tell more people about that <laughs> weird library. But everybody's got that weird library in the state, right? So getting a, mm -hmm. a chance to tell those stories is really fun. And then these were uh, kids. There, oh, there's a picture of the line. <laughs> there's the kids. They're in Canada. They step over the line. They're in Vermont. Pretty neat, right? So That's good that they don't need a real passport for that uh, anymore <laughs> <laughs> for, for them. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's funny, right? A lot of the Vermont border towns, they do have kind of serious border patrol, but then mm -hmm. you go kind of a half mile down the road and you can just walk across the border. You're not really supposed yeah. to, but no. there's a casual attitude because what are they everybody do? Yeah. Rules and they all follow it. It's small enough town that they don't worry about it. I'm sure it's that way across somewhere across the whole border and all of those states that border on Canada. It's very yeah, rural I mean, areas. Yeah. Montana's <laughs> got this huge border. <laughs> So, um, at the end of the at the end of the program, basically the program wraps up September first. Um, at the end of that program, the libraries have two weeks. We again give them posters, put up posters to tell people if you want to be eligible for the statewide prize, bring your passport back, and we'll count how many libraries you went to. They get to keep their passports, but they just have to sort of show them to us. And then we just had a Google form for them, the libraries, to submit that information to us. And we also had a wild card winner, so anybody who participated was potentially eligible to win. We just did a, a drawing, basically. Uh, so Hunter is the one who won at the local library, and they gave him a gift certificate to a little store down the street. I like this uh, page because you can see a whole bunch of people, you know, liking it, thumbs upping it. It's a good picture of the library. It's just great outreach, outreach, outreach. Uh, and this is Virgil, who was last year's president of the Vermont Library Association. And last year, he took our prize bags and actually delivered them to all of our winners. So there's our kid winner, our adult winner, our, and our young adult winner. This year, we decided instead of doing that, we're going to have a wrap-up event 
that people can go to and we'll have slides and we'll show, you know, have cider and donuts and we'll share stories and that kind of thing. So we decided instead of spending money on postage or we use the money we saved on postage and we would spend it on donuts, which I think is a completely sensible decision and I'm happy that we got to make it. Plus people like to share their library stories and so I'm looking forward to having it. It's going to be a central location in the state. Hopefully most people can make it and it's in October so it gives everybody a good amount of time to kind of wrap everything up and October in Vermont is amazing. So looking forward to that. So the end of the first year I felt like it basically went well. We were pretty happy with it. We did make a couple changes most of which I've mentioned to you but uh, I'll just kind of summarize what they are. If you can see uh, in this picture, there's actually a different library. We, we changed the design on the inside. This is, I believe, the Fairhaven Library, which is right on the border of New York. It's one of the four Carnegie libraries in the state of Vermont. Vermont has a lot of Carnegie-looking libraries, like small, boxy, with that kind of like front door and the two window kind of things, mm -hmm. but actually very few Carnegie, Carnegie libraries. So we have a little program special stamp in the library that is pictured inside the passport. It's kind of like a secret Easter egg uh, part of the program. So we did a slightly different design. Other changes that we made, different color, but exactly the same. There's no date information on this. So libraries that have their passports from last year can still use their passports this year. We wanted everything to be as sustainable as possible, and we like the design, frankly. And it's easier if you don't make a new design. So the color indicates that it's a new one, but the design is exactly the same. The only difference is on the back, we actually got the printing donated this year, which was huge. Last year we were just not, we weren't thinking about it. We were just so happy to sort of get things going. And this year we decided to have a more concerted effort to see if we could get um, sponsorship for this. So last year I did all the photocopies myself do not recommend it, a lot of work, super irritating. This year, Capital Copy in Montpelier basically made copies for us. Last year we made 1,000. This year, Capital Copy made 1,500. And for them, from a donation perspective, it's really good news. They get their name on every single passport that we hand out to anybody. Although one of the libraries was a little weird about being like, hey, I copied the PDF from the website it says printed by Capital Copy, but I printed it. Hmm. And I was like, oh, right, that is weird. Okay. <laughs> so we took off the printed by Capital Copy version on the one that's on the website. But it was, for them, it was no big deal. And for us, it basically saved us either, you know, six, eight hours of work, or, you know, it would have been about $400 probably to print them all, including the cardstock and everything else. So we're really excited that we found partnerships and we, we have found, you know, we're the State Library Association. People are actually kind of stoked to partner with us. We've spent so much time, you know, doing more with less and retying our broken rubber bands that I think we don't think about the fact that it's, it's good for businesses to actually help us out with this. So very excited about Capital Copy. Thank you, Capital Copy and Montpelier, Vermont. They're amazing. Um, and then a couple more changes that we made. Um, we're communicating even more. We actually talked to some people at the conference this year who um, were surprised that uh, we had a mailing list all last year. Uh, they were on it, but who knows what happened, right? So this year we actually made more of an effort to tell people to expect the email. We sent them uh, personal emails from a different account to tell them to look for the MailChimp email because, you know, you've got Gmail and it sticks something in a promotions tab or who knows what happens. And a lot of uh, librarians weren't necessarily tech savvy enough to troubleshoot that and they just assumed we forgot about them. So we've been trying to do more communication. Uh, we did a new design, no dated, and last year we borrowed this amazing corner cutter which, you know, did the little smooth rounded corners, but it turns out the corner cutter that we borrowed uh, is kind of a weird expensive thing and we couldn't borrow it again this year and all the corner cutters we looked at and like, you know, the fabric and craft stores weren't any good. So we had to like give ourselves a pep talk and be like, okay, if you don't cut corners on 1,500 passports. 
So it sounds good. To, mm-hmm. It sounds good to be like we didn't cut any corners, but we mostly didn't because we couldn't. Um, our copying was donated, and we made fifty percent more copies. Uh, which I think is going to be worthwhile. We switched to Google Maps, which is a really good idea. Um, Vermont actually, in between last year and this year, got a courier system for ILLs. Uh, like I said, we don't have any consortia, but we do have a um, like an informal consortia, the Green Mountain Library Consortia, who uh, sort of band together to do bulk buying of stuff like Mango Languages and um, other things. And they have an informal courier system now that kind of goes around the state so you can chip in to be part of the courier system. And for most libraries that have an active ILL system, <coughs> excuse me, they, um, they save money over postage. And we're sorry, post office, but uh, now you don't have library rates, so now we use a courier. But what that meant was for people who couldn't come to the conference, we could put their passports in the courier system that they already belong to and get stuff out to most of the libraries that way. And then for libraries that were super teeny or didn't belong, we did kind of a hub and spoke system where we'd send, you probably heard me say that more than once today, where we'd send like a stack of 50 passports to libraries in the region that were near the other libraries and then they could go to a library that was probably no more than a half hour, 40 minutes away if they needed to pick them up. So we felt that worked really well and so our postage expenditures were basically zero, which we were happy about. Um, We're giving away more awards this year because why the heck not? So we're actually going to have a librarian award for the librarian who visits the most libraries. Um, and unfortunately, I am not eligible, which uh, is a bummer, but I made that rule, so I guess it's fair. And then, like I said before, we're going to have the wrap-up celebration, which I think is going to be really fun. I mean, it may just be like the committee and the five people who win and a lot of donuts, but more donuts for me, right? So this is uh, the flyer that we handed out that includes sort of the timeline so that people could kind of see how the whole thing is going to work. So when we hand out the passports, they come with this one sheet, which is just, here's how to do all the things. We tell people there's a mailing list. We provide all the materials. It's an important thing to say over and over again. Uh, A lot of our librarians uh, are just people who work really hard and are very tired. And you say, hey, here's a project, and all they think is, I barely have time to do the stuff that I do now. And so one of the things that's made this the most effective is that all the members of the Passport Committee, which are me and Virgil and Joy and Amanda and Nancy and Sarah, all of us take up a little bit of the slack, help answering questions, help getting people signed up. And so a little bit of work on our part really scales to help librarians who don't really have the ability to do a little more work right now because they're already doing so many other things. And so that, from my perspective, is the most useful thing about the entire project. And so moving forward, we've got a couple plans for sort of what we're going to do on an ongoing basis. Uh, Joy, who's on our passport committee, actually also plays a viola, violin, an instrument for the Vermont Symphony Orchestra. Uh, The Vermont Symphony Orchestra sounds fancy, but like everything else in Vermont, it's not that fancy. And so they have a summer program where, and this is what they do every summer. Every summer, the Vermont Symphony Orchestra goes and plays concerts in eight sort of regional locations. They have one program, they do it in eight places, and so people in like towns like Randolph, where I live with 4,500 people, actually get to have a symphony concert coming to their town. It's amazing. It's really great. And they have a loosely passport themed, I don't even know what it is, Uh, but basically they're like, oh, your passport to music or whatever the heck it is, but it's just mostly a name. Joy, who plays instruments for them, was like, hey, we're doing this passport program for the libraries? Like, how would you guys feel if we worked together and handed out our passports at your event? VSO was like, We love that idea. Why wouldn't we? And so we did a redesign. I don't think I have a picture of it here of same passport, but instead of, you know, copy by capital copy on the back, there's a little VSO logo. And then when you open the passport, the first place where you could put a stamp sort of, you know, up over uh, in the corner has a little gray VSO logo. And that's the Vermont Symphony Orchestra box. 
I mean, it's a little weird because it's not a library technically, so blah, 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 blah. but again, whatever. Like, it's cool to be partnering with another statewide organization who's just up for it. And so we've partnered with the VSO. Um, over time, we're looking towards sustainability, maybe getting a grant. I mean, the program really takes about a couple hundred bucks, really not much to run a statewide program. But what we love is to have a plan for how to keep it going moving forward. Like if we got every participating library to chip in five bucks, say, we would actually have enough money to run the program with a surplus every year. So we're thinking about, you know, ways of getting little donations or ways of getting corporate donations so that we could be assured of having regular prizes. We also have librarians and libraries chip in prizes, you know, books from the book sale or um, mugs, things at your library that you just have a lot of, but that might be neat for somebody who's not from your library. So we're thinking about having a year-long program. And the other thing we would like to do, and sort of this is part of this, is sharing out the program with libraries or regional uh, library systems in other states and helping them, if they're interested, do a program like this. I mean, it doesn't even have to be a statewide program. It can just be something regional. It can be time limited. It can be who even knows, right? There's all sorts of ways. It's just the idea of there's a little list. Here's places you can visit. Here's a way to keep track of your progress. At the end of it, hooray, you did it. And just everybody feels slightly better about just sort of the whole deal. And, you know, people feel pretty good about libraries in general. So this is just another way to sort of kick that ball down the field, which makes me happy. So thanks pay it, for paying. Pay it forward, yeah. Yeah, 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 pay it <laughs> forward. And so you can get in touch with me if you're interested in um, specific stuff, if you want to. I'm at Jessamine on Twitter. The program web address is at the top there, and this talk, including every slide and links to more information about some of the specific stuff, is at the bottom. So I'm really excited about this kind of program, and I'd be happy to share information or whatever to um, help other people either do it or just answer questions about how we did it. So thanks for your time. Great. Thank you so much, Jasmine. That was um Exactly what I was looking for. Yeah, I've, I've heard about this program last year when you guys did it the first time. I remember I saw it coming up on your, I'm assuming through your Twitter maybe, um, and said this is to be something cool to keep an eye on. And then I saw the thing saying you're doing it again this year. And I was like, oh, well, obviously it was a success. Let's uh, see what's going on with it. <laughs> um, does anybody have any questions? If you do have any, nobody typed in anything during the presentation. But if you have any questions, type them in your GoToWebinar interface. Um, if you want to use your microphone, just let me know and I can say, you know, say unmute me. I want to ask my question that way. Um, I think it was great, especially the part when you're talking about the scalability of this, that it does not have to be this crazy statewide thing, doing it just in a county or for places that in larger states, which is of um, Nebraska, is very much like Vermont. We don't have um, library systems or consortiums here of major size. We have small little things that do specific things, but we're very similar in that each library is its own independent entity doing its own thing. Um, but that you could do it in a county or in just an area or something. That is that's great that they could do that. Well, um, and the big thing that we have also that's really different from Nebraska is you guys, at least I feel like you have, kind of a strong state library system, and our state library mm -hmm. system has suffered some fairly punishing budget cuts over the last mm -hmm. five or six years. So they barely get the summer mm -hmm. reading program going. And the summer reading program, it's amazing. But, you know, it comes with a lot of rules and a lot of stuff. And, you know, I think for some libraries it's just a little overwhelming. And just being able to do something at a statewide level, I mean, the state library enjoys this program, but, you know, they had a bunch of sort of ideas that they were into but also didn't want to fund, you know? Like, you should give a copy to every, uh, passport to every legislator. And we're like, that's like 400 copies. We yeah. only make 15. <laughs> So they're, they're good at idea generating, but we just really wanted to kind of rubber hits the road, do the thing, mm -hmm. you know, not kind of spitball about how to optimize it as much as just get it done, get feedback, and be very, you know, open and present to getting feedback from people. Like the big thing about the towns on the inside of the passports didn't even occur to us and was a real problem for the people it was a problem for. So this year we got an opportunity to be like, hey, you spoke, we listened. 
we've changed it. I didn't include a picture, but the inside is just like a dirt road. <laughs> <laughs> Much better. Um, yeah. passport. But it looks yeah. cool. And, you know, and then no hurt feelings, and everybody feels like they're part of it, which is what we care about. Yeah, it's a, it's a very grassroots type um, program. Um, and the great that you can be flexible about that without having the, you know, you've got that committee that you said that's part, you know, people involved in um, Vermont Library Association um, yeah. that are specific. Because that's something I was curious about, too, is if that was something that came out of a particular section or, or something of the group of the association, or was it just the, the people that thought it would be something cool to do? <laughs> It was a combination of like, so I've always had like a personal goal. Like I visited all the 251 towns in the state and like, mm -hmm. you know, very excited. And so now my new project is to visit 183, all the libraries, and take a picture. And I've been in like 30 or 40, like not that many, honestly. Mm -hmm. And so I, that's always been kind of in the back of my mind. And I got a little bit, somebody wrote a, you know, a little news article about it. And it was, people were like, oh, neat idea. And I was like, oh, I thought it was just me. <laughs> but then Virgil, who was the, I think, incoming president of VLA at the time, and also my neighbor, so like we hang out, um, went to, I think he went to NELA, which is the New England Library Association Conference. So all mm -hmm. six states in New England have a conference that's a little bit more kind of big ideas and a little less just tiny conference like ours is. And the Connecticut Library Association had a person showcasing that program. Mm -hmm. He knew about my thing and literally was like, hey, do you want to do this with me? <laughs> <laughs> and I did look up, Connecticut did do it a second year. This They're involved in doing one right now, too, again. Oh, great. Yeah, Thank they you. have a Facebook page as well that I added to our links. Yeah, I just decided to stay okay. here. But they're, they're pretty much the same schedule as you. Yeah, last year I think was their first one, and now they're just wrapping up another one. Eh, I can't remember exactly the timeline. Yeah, and so the big thing mm -hmm. with us was just, you know, having an ad hoc committee. So it's not part of any committee. The big thing is it's really mostly publics. Um, mm -hmm. One of the reasons we might want to do something that doesn't just happen during the summer is that most of the school libraries, except the ones that are school public hybrids, are closed. And so they can't mm. be a part of this. And kids love this. Like, it's super fun for kids. So we might want to find a way to have either a thing just for school libraries or have it year round and just do it all year next year or something. The big thing about all year though is that then you're planning over the holiday time, which is the worst. Oh yeah. So we'll have to figure out how to how to get that done. Mm -hmm. Um, we do have a comment here. Um, Judy, who's in Texas, says a community here in Texas is doing a similar thing on a community scale. They have people talk to local officials, shop locally, attend community meetings and events, etc., and then take the completed card to the library to be entered into a prize drawing. So uh, connecting the library to all the other organizations in the, in the community. That's a that's, that's another great that's idea. Cool. Yeah. One of the things that's been the funniest for me is as I talked about this to friends of mine who aren't library people, they're like, oh, like the brewery tour. I'm like, what? <laughs> I guess there's some local brewery who has a brewery passport, and it's different from ours in that it has pre-printed, like there's eight breweries or ten breweries or whatever the heck it is, and it has pre a pre-printed passport, and if you get a stamp at all eight, ten, twelve, you can see how much beer I drink. Um, <laughs> If you get a, then it again, it comes into a prize drawing. And so it's another way of doing a very similar thing. But it is a really nice way, Judy, I think you make a really good point of saying, you know, we're all together. So, like, you get a stamp from whatever, like the restaurant and the town hall and maybe the church and maybe the library and maybe whatever. And I think it really helps send that message hey, we're all here, we're all part of the community. And I think that has a useful, I think that's useful mm -hmm. to get across to people. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and here in Nebraska, our tourism um, department, uh, state tourism does a, a Nebraska passport. They've been doing, I think, looking at the site, it's, this is in their th third year, where it's going to any sort of tourist type things around the, the state. Um, and they're uh, doing it in conjunction with the national, the 100th anniversary of the national park system this year. And it is a statewide thing, which can 
Nebraska is a very large space-wise state. Um, the population here is not huge. We've got a lot of open spaces, but they've also broken it up. And this kind of relates to what you're talking about doing it by county or something to different um, tours you can take. So you can just focus on art or on flavors, foods, uh, film, so specific parts of it rather than trying to hit every single thing in there. So it's the same kind of idea. I don't see anything related to libraries. I don't know. I'll have to take a closer look at it. Yeah, opportunity, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We should get involved in that, yeah. So there's lots of ways you can get creative with this stuff, with this whole concept, absolutely. Well, and that's what I really like about it, is you can kind of make it into whatever you want. It can be super competitive. It can be super not competitive. I was really um, happy to be involved and get to do something that was really well designed. You know, I really liked getting to use my design chops and, and putting those together because, you know, we're in kind of a tech shadow in Vermont. So... A lot of libraries don't have kind of a lot of web presence or they don't have a lot of, um, you know, online presence. And so being able to give them tools and materials that really looked nice and a website that really looked nice, I just felt like kind of helped everyone else be like, you know, hey, you really can design things that are easy to use and nice to look at and easy to understand. And so that was the sort of gratifying part for me personally. And everybody got to kind of contribute. Virgil got to drive all over the state delivering prize bags. He was so <laughs> happy. Like everybody found a thing mm -hmm. where they felt like their skill was useful too, which was also just a really cool part of it. Like as librarians, we felt like we had unique individual skills that we could lend to it that made it made it good. Mm -hmm. And what you were saying about doing the design work and stuff, that, um, the, and getting some of the libraries to realize that there is all this social media out there that they could look at and investigate. It's doing this program is teaching by example, showing, look, we put together this website. It's simple. It's easy. It doesn't take a lot. You don't have to be a graphic design artist to re be able to do this kind of thing. So that may, you know, just show them you could do something else different, you know, something locally that you might want to. Yeah, and there was a real, um, there really wasn't a lot of sort of negative stuff either. So there was kind of a social media outreach without, I think, what a lot of people's concerns are, which is that, I don't know, people put pictures of butts on your Facebook page. Like, I don't know what people are concerned about, yeah. but I think sometimes people are concerned about putting themselves out there and it it might just be opening themselves up for problems and this was a nice showcase of that not happening so kind of proving a negative in a useful way too I think was yes. was a good example. Mm -hmm. Alleviating a lot of the fears and that maybe they'll continue. Yeah, you know? People have concerns and they're not wrong you know they're just mm -hmm. they may be out of proportion to the actual risk and so being able to take that step and show that at least in this case it worked out okay mm -hmm. I mean you know it's there's nothing political about this, so it Not makes real. it no. <laughs> just kind of talk about it. But I think that helps people, you know, get get their feet wet. Maybe if it's what they want, or even know that you know, me or Virgil or Nancy or Joy or Sarah or Amanda can be people they can talk to about that kind of thing. And I think that also is sort of helpful because we don't have regional uh, associations. You know, a lot of us don't know each other that well either, and we hang out at on a mailing list and at the conference, but in person, you know, I don't necessarily know what everybody's skills are. So it's it's nice to get to know that as well. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, we do have one question here. I think we'll just take this one because um, we're a little after 11 o'clock. Um, got a couple of things here. Um, has anyone approached a local travel agency to suggest that it be a focus of Vermont visits? Um, she said years ago, travel agencies helped promote li a library friends group in their state, um, uh, friends groups, train robbery event on historic rails, so though not necessarily tourism, but actual travel agencies saying, that's come to Vermont great, and do this. That's a great idea. I mean, when I think of travel agencies nowadays, the bulk of the ones I think of are like, you know, AAA, like p agencies that have less of a regional focus. Um, the 251 Club was actually originally started by a guy who worked for Vermont Life Magazine, and Vermont Life Magazine um, started as a travel and tourism sort of thing to encourage people to come to Vermont back when coming to Vermont was actually more difficult because we didn't have any highways and, <laughs> and that kind of thing. So I think, yeah, we, 
I mean, reaching out to the State Department of Tourism also, I think, would be something that would be useful. I'm really trying to think of, like, travel agents. Do I know travel agents? I should talk to travel agents because that would be neat. A lot of people do kind of want a thing, you know, like an open yeah. studio thing. Like, yeah, they want to, I want to visit Vermont because I've heard a lot about it and oh, I know the leaves change, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> I, and, and, and that's all they know about uh, us in the, uh, in the Northeast. I'm originally in, from New York. I moved. Uh, upstate New York, so I, I know. <laughs> um, but then they want to know, well, what else can I do? What else do I do besides do that? And this is something. Well, here's a here's an event. Here's a, here's a suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing we didn't really do this year, which I'd like to probably do next year, is have a bunch of mini tours. Like, go see all four Carnegie libraries. Here's the list of all the libraries in all the counties. That kind of thing, mm -hmm. which I think would be you know fun for people locally. Like, we do a October tour of libraries, some regions do, so you can actually go to, like, six libraries in a weekend, and they're all doing a special thing, you know, cider and donuts or whatever, so you're already leaf peeping. Why don't you stop by and see what these six libraries in this one county are all doing, and it gives you kind of an excuse to be out and about, which I also think is what the 251 Club does. Yeah, nice. And someone here does have a comment that they said they'd love to replicate this in our um, 30 library, public library system, and maybe partner with local restaurants in the in the rural communities, you know, come to this library, which is out somewhere, and then what? Well, here, go over to our lunch place here, and you'll have a great meal. And she suggested even our mascot could even deliver the prizes, and I asked, they're the Winnie Fox Library System, so Winnie the Fox is their mascot. <laughs> that would be so cute. <laughs> Man, there's nothing like a mascot costume for mm -hmm. really making something seem like a like a, a fun big deal. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, it cool. gets attention. The news will come. They'll take pictures of it. It'll be awesome. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we'll wrap it up. We're a little after 11 a.m. here Central Time. Um, so thank you very much, Jessamyn. This is this is a great program. I'm I'm definitely interested in it, and um, I'm hoping other people will. As you said, um, you guys are willing to help other library, other states, other libraries, other uh, consortiums, whatever level you're at, to get something like this going for yourself. So um, reach out to them on the website there um, and see if you can get something going um, in other areas of the country. Yeah, that'd be really fun. I'm happy to talk to anybody about any of this. <laughs> Great. All right. I'm going to pull presenter control back to my screen here now. What am I doing here? There we go. There it goes. All right. So um, thank you very much, Jessamyn. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, this is um, the website for libraries that was out there, um, the main site for the session for the program but here's where in our in our delicious account we have them all collected here all the different links related to anything going on with that um, and it will be included in our recordings um, so this has been recorded and it will be on our website which is over here at Encompass Live um, Luckily for us, so far, nothing has uh, called itself Encompass Live yet. So if you just Google us, you'll find the website for it. <laughs> um, these are our upcoming shows. The archive will be right over here. Um, this is the one from last week where we just had a recording and links. But um, I'm going to have a link to um, Jessamyn's website that has everything and then the links um, I have where all her slides are and links that I have in um, our delicious account will be on there. Um, this afternoon, I'd say it's probably ready. I will send an email email out to all of you, let you know um, when it's available and ready to watch or share with anyone else um, that you think might be interested in this program. So that'll wrap it up for today's show. I hope you join us next week when our topic is our um, State of Nebraska's One Book, One Nebraska um, program. Um, this year, um, the entire state, well, anyone who's interested in the state, is reading. Uh, going to be reading The Meaning of Names. Um, and the author of the book, we're so happy she's going to be with us here next week. Um, Karen Shoemaker will be here talking about the book and will give you some ideas and things you can do with this program at your library anywhere you are in the state. So um, definitely do uh, join us for that. And if you're from outside of Nebraska, you know, see how we handle our one book, one state program here. Um, so definitely sign up and join us for that. Any of our other upcoming shows are on here. I've got a lot more in the works. This uh, schedule is always being added too, so check back regularly and you'll see all my new July sessions coming in. I've got one on here so far, but a lot more are um, to be added. Also, if you are a big Facebook user and Compass Live is on Facebook, pop over there and give us a like and you'll get notices about what's going on. I do a reminder every Wednesday about whatever that show. 
um, is ready to start. Um, when our recordings are ready, I post on here as well. So um, if you keep track of things there, um, like Encompass Live over on Facebook and keep up with what you're, we're doing here. Other than that, that wraps it up for today's show. Thank you very much for attending, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.